My dear friends, if you will remain standing to hear the word of the gospel, I share with you today from Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised, and on the Sabbath he went to the synagogue as he normally did, and he stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant, sat down, and every eye was upon him. He began to explain to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled just as you heard it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. I want to thank the children and youth and adult leaders who led us in this service today for this is the third Sunday in the season of Advent. Advent is the season of preparation, preparing for Christ coming, not simply Christ coming as a baby born in a manger years ago, but Christ coming again and Christ coming each and every day into our hearts and into our lives and it is the Sunday in Advent that we traditionally celebrate the gift of joy that Jesus brings to us. Just as the angels proclaimed good news of great tidings, joy to the world that we sing. So I want to hear you all say glory to God. Will you say that for me? Glory to God. Now I'm going to tell you some things, and it's the way we ought to live. We ought to live as joyous people saying glory to God. So when I say a phrase, I want you to respond by saying glory to God. So here's my first phrase. For the children of this church, we sing glory to God. For the youth of this church, we sing glory to God. For the music of this church, we sing glory to God. For the fact that we are $150,000 below our budget right now and still in need of money, we sing glory to God. Oh, I'm so proud of you. For the fact that many of us are grieving today, we sing glory to God. Y'all were not quite as enthusiastic on that one. And I get it. I get it. Sometimes it is difficult to sing glory to God and to feel joy. But that is one of the biggest gifts that Christ gives to us is the gift of joy. Joy is not dependent upon our circumstances, my friends, like happiness is. Joy is a choice. Joy is a gift that comes in our hearts that we can express And as you saw me corralling my little sheep, Joey, up here today, one of the biggest things that Joey gives to me is the gift of joy. And I believe that he receives joy from me when I look at the little smile on his face when he sees me. Giving and receiving joy is what we are called to do as followers of Jesus Christ. For we have received this great gift of joy in Jesus himself, the Christ child that was born for each and every one of us to remind us of how much God loves us and cares for us. Children understand joy so much better than we adults do. Children just exude joy. You mention the word Christmas to them, And they smile and they dance around. They are filled with joy. You mention Christmas to a lot of adults. They hang their heads down and go, oh, I have got shopping to do. I've got bills to pay. I've got cards I haven't written. I've got cookies I've got to bake. 
and we become frantic and we become short and we lose our joy. The children remind us of the simplicity of joy and of that gift that is essential for our lives. Years ago, I read a story about a little girl who taught the importance of joy to her father. She was in a store, one of those stores like Target, with a wad of money in her fist. And she was in the aisle with all of the beautiful Barbie dolls. And she was looking at each Barbie doll and picking it up and then turning to her father and holding up the Barbie doll and the fist of money she would say, do I have enough? And more often than not, the father would say, yes, you have enough. And she'd go, hmm. She'd put the Barbie doll back down and pick up another one. Do I have enough for this one? And he'd say, yes, you have enough. She'd look at it, contemplate it, put it back. This went on for several minutes, and while she was picking up those Barbie dolls and trying to decide which one to buy, a little boy came into that same aisle, and on the opposite side of the aisle were toys that were more like video games. There were Spider-Man video games and Pokemon video games and Batman video games, and he was looking at each one of those, and he had some money in his hand, too. But it only looked like he had maybe $5 in his hand. This little boy was neatly dressed, but his jacket looked like maybe it was a size too small for him. And his father was there with him, just as the little girl's father was there with her. The father stood behind the little boy as he picked up a video game and held it up to his father with just a quizzical look. And the father would shake his head no, and the boy would put the video game back down. The little girl stopped looking at her Barbies, and she was entranced with the little boy. She just stared at him as he picked up video game after video game, and his father kept shaking his head no. She looked at the Barbie doll in her hands, a beautiful, exquisitely dressed Barbie doll that would have been the envy of all of her girlfriends. She looked back at the little boy. The little boy gave up on the video games and he picked up something that looked like a little sticker book. And his father shook his head, yes. And the little boy took the sticker book and they went on their way. The little girl looked up at her father. She looked back down at the Barbie. She put the Barbie back on the shelf and she walked right over to the shelf where all of those video games were, and she picked up that last video game that the little boy had picked up, and a big grin came up on her face. She told her daddy, yeah, let's go, let's go. They went to the checkout counter, and the lady who's telling the story said she was intrigued, and she gathered up her belongings, and she just followed the little girl and father to the checkout counter. As she stood behind them, the little girl put the video game on the counter, paid the lady for it, and then she did this. The checkout lady leaned over and she whispered something into the checkout lady's ear. Checkout lady smiled, put the video game in a bag, and then put it under the counter. And the little girl said, thank you. And she and her father walked and they just stood by the door, right behind the woman telling the story came that little boy and his father with his sticker book. He put his sticker book on the counter and he paid the lady for the sticker book. She took his money, put the sticker book in a bag, gave him his receipt, and she said, oh my, look at this, you're my 100th customer today, you get a special prize. And she reached under the counter and picked up that bag with the video game and handed it to him. He opened up the bag and he saw the video game and he goes, just what I wanted. And that little girl standing over by the door had the biggest and brightest smile you have ever seen in your life. The lady telling the story As she watched the whole thing, 
decided to follow the little girl and the father out to their car. And she heard the father ask the little girl this question. Honey, that was a nice thing that you just did, but why did you do that? And the little girl said, Nana and Poppy gave me this money for Christmas and told me to do something with it that would bring me joy, didn't they? And, she, and he said, well, of course, honey. They always want you to have joy. And she said, well, that's exactly what I did. She learned the secret of what Jesus proclaimed in his very first sermon that we read today. That Jesus' mission in this world is to proclaim good news to all people to proclaim good news to those who are poor, to those who feel imprisoned, not just literally in prisons, but imprisoned by fear, imprisoned by anxiety, imprisoned by depression, imprisoned by jobs that bring them no joy. Jesus came to bring us that gift of joy in living here and now. And he calls us as his followers to pass that joy on, to receive that joy and to spread it around so that others feel that joy. So our charge today as we hear Jesus' very first sermon is how are we going to proclaim release to the captives around us and free them so that they can feel the joy of the Lord around them? One suggestion that I have is if you still have people on your shopping list that you have not bought things for yet, instead of going to the stores and searching online frantically to find something that will get here on time, instead of buying people knickknacks that will just collect dust in their house, or instead of buying them a box of chocolate when they could use more calories like our nation could use more crime, Give that money to a mission, to a charity in their honor. I know that one of the biggest joys that Richard and I have had over the years is when we open up gifts on Sunday morning and we read that someone has bought books for children in a school in our name so that little children whose libraries do not have the most up-to-date books will be able to read and enjoy the gift of stories. Or to receive a card that says chickens have been bought for a family in Honduras so that they can provide for themselves and their family through the Heifer Project. Or to receive a card that says a gift was given to Epworth Children's Home in order to nurture the children who are being taken care of by that wonderful United Methodist institution here in Columbia. Instead of going out and spending money on commercial and material gifts, think about giving a missional gift to those people who are still left on your shopping list. And beyond giving physical gifts, think about giving your time, and your talent, and your energy. Even in this busy season, slowing down long enough to visit some of our homebound members or some of the people in the nursing home whose names we do not know. I have learned because of my mother who is suffering with dementia, but also because of the many people that I have visited over the years in nursing homes and in their homes who are elderly. Often the older people who have given so much time and energy to a church become secluded away and forgotten in a real and tangible way. We might pray for them, we might remember their names, but we rarely make the effort and take the time to drive our cars to visit with them and to sit with them and to share conversation with them. I remember years ago, Richard and I went to visit an elderly lady who was a member of our congregation. We went to the nursing home to visit with her. 
And when we walked into her room, she had a room that she shared with another older lady. When we walked into Ms. Doris's room, she had probably 50 Christmas cards displayed on her wall and on her counter in her dresser top. And so our first reaction was, wow, Miss Doris, look at all of these cards. And she said, yes, I am so blessed. I am so deeply loved by the people in our community and in our church and in my family. I get cards every day. And she looked down at her lap and showed us the envelopes that had just been delivered that day that she was still opening. Her roommate, who was right beside her, said, I can't get over how loved she is. It's amazing. And that made Richard and I turn and notice that that dear lady had not even one Christmas card displayed on her side of the room. How sad, how sad that there are people who are lonely. One of the ways that we can spread joy so that everyone feels the joy and love that Miss Doris felt is to spend some time and make the effort to visit some of the people who are homebound and in nursing homes who feel that they have been forgotten, to remind them that they are loved and that they are special, to remind them to feel joy once again in their lives. There's one more story that brings that home to me. It reminds me that it does take intention. Joy is a choice that we need to make every day, a choice to feel it and to share it. And often when we make the choice to share it, it comes right back to us and we feel it, maybe even more deeply than the person we're sharing it with. There was a university professor and he was invited to a military base to give a lecture on something. And one of the lieutenants met him at the airport, and the lieutenant started walking him towards the baggage claim area. But the university professor noticed that as they were walking along, every now and again, this lieutenant would disappear, and he'd have to stop and go, wait, 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 where'd he go? One time, he stopped to help an elderly woman pick up something that she had dropped, the next time, he stopped to help two little children sit in the lap of the Santa Claus who was there in the airport. Another time, he stopped to help someone who was lost find their directions around the airport. And the university professor asked this young lieutenant, How did you learn to live this way? The lieutenant said, What do you mean? He said, you keep stopping and helping other people who feel lost or disoriented or who need help. You're always helping them and bringing smiles to their faces when you do it. How did you learn to live that way? And the lieutenant said, ah, you see, I served in the war and my job was to clear the minefield. And you never knew what was going to happen between your steps. So I learned to live in between the steps. I learned to find joy and peace and live in the moment. So whenever I see someone in need, I want to help them live in the moment to see the joy and the love and the gift of life in that moment. My dear friends, may we be people who live in between the steps, not worried about the future, not regretting the past, but feeling the joy in the present. Our little children will lead us and show us the way if we stop long enough to look in their precious little faces. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, May it be so for you and for me. Amen.